What is it about our brains that we can look at three objects laid out like this and just be compelled to nudge this one just a little bit? Welcome to episode 10 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Today is actually a little different because I've asked Ryan to take a quick break. The skills we're working with today are purely visual and it just made a little more sense for me to create the homework assignments. We're exploring the design principles of alignment and order and disorder. The brief is pretty simple. I'll provide two houses drawn in front of you. Your task is to revise one by making it more aligned and orderly, and then for the other one, to revise it to be a bit intentionally unaligned and a bit disorderly. So first, let's see what the principle of order and disorder tells us. Put simply, our brains are great at pattern seeking. So if I see objects arranged loosely like this, my brain just immediately tells me I'm looking at a natural scene. Maybe it's rocks in a field, could be leaves floating on a pond, or just people milling about. But if I were to formalize these and rearrange them, same number of dots, same size, now we see order. These might represent buildings seen from a top view in a neighborhood, maybe graphic elements laid out on a website. And this is purely cognitive. It's a cross-cultural standard. We don't think about it consciously. Order implies intelligence and human intervention. Disorder or randomness imparts a natural aspect. And since this is an unavoidable signal, we just need to be conscious when we're designing our own artwork. And if order and disorder are terms that we use to describe the finished look, then you can think of alignment as the technique of arranging shapes into either order or disorder. This would be no different if I wanted to add a new element. So if I wanted to put something right here, it really just comes down to when I'm drawing the element, imagining this line right here, and then drawing mine lined up with it. And it's just something you get used to doing as an artist. Because the thing is, there's a big difference between actually aligned and just a little bit off. If we were to apply this to a more real world scenario, let's examine this building in front view. It's a modernist home, it's clearly using a rectilinear pattern language, but as it's currently laid out, it's got a few issues. We can see here, just like I showed before, there's just a bit of sloppiness. Edges don't quite align, almost nothing lines up, even though we have a bunch of nice rectangles that we could really take advantage of alignment if we wanted to. So to demonstrate how this homework could work, I'm going to drop the opacity way down here so we can just use it for our own drawing over. And what I'm going to try and do is plan out major lines to align against. Maybe I'll line up this way. So I can just pull that straight across. And that then will serve as the top line of the window and this other window. And they just line up nicely with the garage here. Now you'll notice I did not finish the entire verticals and that's because I don't know exactly how far I want everything to go down. In fact, as I'm looking at this, one other aspect of alignment sometimes is spacing. The spacing we see here is pretty small, and this spacing is bigger. So I've got a couple options. Ideally, what I think I want is to have kind of a standardized spacing generally. So what I've done is I've just shifted this one horizontally. I've still retained this top alignment. And I've now made these spaces about the same. I didn't measure, but to me it looks okay. Now I need to think about how do I want to line up the bottom divider here. And I think I might just, hmm, I think I like this bottom. So I'm going to extend that across, connect that up, connect that up, and erase away the difference there. Then to block in the door, I'm going to try and keep a pretty similar height because the door was scaled based on a person, so I don't want to just make up a new height that's totally random, but I'm kind of centering it within the box. And I think I'm going to split this equally, so we have kind of an equal spacing here and here. And then I'm going to... I have these lanterns down here. I could align them horizontally this way, so the outer edge meets up with the outer edge of the window. 
And if I make it a little bit bigger here, I have a nice spacing that's the same there and there. So maybe that's what I'll do. Pull that straight down. And then you just kind of imagine this negative space as being an equal buffer. And then I go ahead and fast forward a little bit here, and this is what I end up with. Now, in the case of this demo, I have used color. I've filled it in like a coloring book. For your assignment, you don't need to worry about that. The thing we're focusing on today is alignment. So color might be fun for you, but you definitely don't need to. Now, one last thing I want to demonstrate before finishing up here is the idea of using the lack of alignment to tell the story you're trying to tell. So here I've got a house that we could say might look better if it was a little more wobbly. This to me looks old. Maybe it's a cottage made of stone. And I'm not talking about making the lines themselves wiggly. In fact, I could just take this current drawing and just arrange it in a way that it's a little askew, a little bit out of square. Here I can rotate this one a tiny bit. Maybe I can make sure that the chimney doesn't quite relate with the other elements. Um, I guess I could take this one here a little bit. So now what I've done is really pretty subtle, but I've thrown all the tops of these out of visual alignment with each other. It doesn't look very different from what I started with in the same way that the modern house doesn't look all that much different from the wobbly start that it had. But there's something about this that our brains immediately understand as a little less orderly. And so depending on what you're designing, both are useful in different scenarios, so it's important that you're using it on purpose. So for today's homework, I have two houses that you can download and do the exact same tracing that I did. Use strong alignment on the modern house and intentional disorder on the country house. And when you're all done, I will see you in the next lesson.